Tesla seems to have started a huge plan at Giga Nevada to carry out its mission to bring the Tesla Semi to the entire transportation industry from the beginning of 2024. Its performance is still something to see, if it could become a hot phenomenon in the transportation industry. And we gotta ask, how's Tesla doing all this? Welcome to Tesla Car World. Kindly show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell. That way, you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, here we go with today's content. The deployment of Tesla semi trucks is limited to about 100 vehicles, which is why we're witnessing its outdoor performance and it remains a rare and fascinating experience. The California Highway Patrol has shared a video of the Tesla semi electric truck navigating an icy road that's covered in frost. Tesla's operating a fleet of Tesla semis between the Gigafactory in Nevada, located east of Reno, and facilities in California. One criticism it's faced is primarily operating in the comfortable climates of California and Nevada. However, to travel between the two states, the electric truck must cross mountains and the Donner Summit. Conditions there can get quite harsh, and the local highway patrol has reported road closures due to icy conditions. Recently, the Tesla Semi was spotted taking on the challenge of navigating through this treacherous terrain. In the California Highway Patrol video, the towing vehicle may not have the best time, but the Semi itself handled that difficult road section quite well, inching forward while maintaining control. What helps Tesla's Semi demonstrate such outstanding capabilities? Okay, let's start with the size and weight of the battery pack. As Tesla's remained tight-lipped about this information with the media until now, the current major challenge for the semi lies in production quantity, as the tractor can weigh a maximum of 80,000 pounds. If it goes over that, the semi would be too heavy and face difficulties navigating these challenging terrains. This means that the battery weight needs improvement to allow for increased cargo weight, a crucial factor if you're a food or materials supplier trying to maximize load capacity per delivery. According to Tesla's report, the semi has a range of over 500 miles and can achieve a speed of over 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Using a simple calculation to obtain a 1,000 kilowatt hour battery capacity, 500 miles or 0.5 miles an hour, it has a battery mass 10 times that of the Model S or X. In reality, Tesla's introduced the second generation 4680 battery cells with an estimated energy density of around 0.305 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Therefore, the new battery pack for the Tesla Semi, expected from 2023, weighs approximately 3,278 kilograms, equivalent to over 7,200 pounds. Compared to the previous version of the Tesla Semi using first-generation 4680 cells, where the battery weight could reach 8,000 pounds, Tesla has likely taken significant measures to substantially reduce the battery weight within one to two years. This includes incorporating 5% silicon into the battery, reducing weight while enhancing cell performance. Finally, the Tesla Semi reserves an additional 600 pounds for cargo space, focusing solely on the battery. It's essential to consider the entire structure as well. For the electric semi truck, the government's increased the weight limit by an additional 2,000 pounds, allowing for a total weight of up to 82,000 pounds. Meanwhile, conventional Class 8 long haul trucks with heavy duty diesel engines weigh around 17,000 pounds for the tractor, and with the traditional noisy powertrain, they add about 4,000 pounds. It appears that the Tesla Semi is gaining an advantage when it comes to both power and the weight of its tractor. When comparing the Tesla Semi to other electric truck models, a noticeable difference emerges, as no manufacturer seems to be able to provide a battery power output that can surpass that of the Semi. Next, let's address the range, demonstrated in both scenarios for the Tesla Semi, where it achieves high efficiency over 500 miles with a maximum payload in both stable and harsh environments. The Tesla Semi boasts a drag coefficient when not towing a trailer, making it a truly aerodynamic bullet with up to 99.99% .99 efficiency. However, in the case of maximum load with 80,000 pounds or even 82,000 pounds, the drag it exhibits is 0.36 CD, which is remarkably good when compared to other electric trucks or internal combustion engines as it surpasses them all. Although you may not have control over the trailer as its shape can significantly impact the drag coefficient. The operating speed of the Tesla Semi is reported to be 50 to 60 miles an hour, as revealed by Tesla designers. This was confirmed in a recording by renowned Tesla Semi enthusiast Henrik Zane, capturing the Cybertruck speeding at 50 miles an hour with the Tesla Semi even overtaking the electric pickup. We need to estimate the energy consumed by the Tesla Semi within a certain range, and this is relatively straightforward. Energy is simply represented as power multiplied by time. We can calculate time by dividing the distance by the average speed, and power is obtained by force multiplied by velocity. 
Now we can substitute the power components into the equation we derived earlier. Thus, we have an equation for the required battery capacity for the truck. Okay, we'll summarize its components. To calculate the total force acting on the truck, we first need to calculate the force required to overcome inertia, meaning how much force it would take to get the truck moving. This is part of the equation. This takes into account the efficiency of the electric motor and brakes as well as the energy obtained from regenerative braking. Now, we need to calculate the forces acting to slow down the car going down, such as drag, rolling friction on the wheels, and gravity when the car goes uphill. Musk pointed out that the vehicle's operating range is calculated on flat roads, so this component returns to zero. So this formula is not intended for a truck working on rough terrain. With a drag coefficient of 0.36 CD, we'll take the average rolling resistance of truck tires as 0.0063 and an average speed of 50 miles an hour. This also applies to city driving with average acceleration and deceleration rates and a frontal area of 7.2 square meters. The remaining parts are constants that you don't need to worry about too much in this example. With this calculation, we can see that the 300 mile variant will require 550 to 600 kilowatt hour battery and the 500 mile variant will need a 900 kilowatt hour battery to move in real world conditions with a full load, seemingly aligning with Tesla's claims. The battery for the 500 mile variant will be more expensive than that of a traditional truck while having a shorter operating range and lower cargo capacity. This will result in a longer return on investment even with operating cost per mile being lower than 20% compared to a conventional diesel truck. However, profits are not the only consideration. This truck will use about 25% of the energy of a traditional truck thanks to its highly efficient engine, and most of this energy will be supplied by renewable sources. This truck has the potential to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the road transport industry. On the flip side, when the Tesla Semi operates in steeper terrain, its operating range compromised, making it unable to achieve a maximum 500-mile journey. Instead, the range will be reduced by nearly half. What could help Tesla Semi live up to the hype? The concept of designing a mobile home for the Tesla Semi is indeed a groundbreaking plan, allowing Tesla to integrate additional features such as a small bed within the truck by extending the cabin towards the rear. Currently, the driver's cabin area has approximately 3 by 7 feet of space, with a height suitable for a 6 foot tall person to move around comfortably. The rear part, where the entire cable system can be modified to fit the new design without much difficulty, can be enclosed to create a separate compartment for personal belongings. This enables truck drivers to live with the truck for months on end if they need to work at full capacity. As we know, the centrally positioned driver's seat in the Tesla Semi is a unique highlight for this truck model. The Tesla Semi's cabin differs significantly from traditional internal combustion engine truck cabins due to its spacious design, allowing the driver to stand upright freely, even accommodating tall individuals quite easily within the cabin. This design choice, however, has been a major point of contention for the Tesla Semi, with many expressing concerns that this position makes it challenging to observe the rear and sides of the truck. According to Musk, the centrally positioned seat aims to provide maximum visibility with the assistance of multiple cameras and sensors on the bigger Semi. Essentially, with little training, anyone can drive it. You just have to think bigger when driving. But it's not difficult. It's quite straightforward. Tesla has provided ample storage space on the right side of the driver. Drivers can store drinks, snacks, and other items for long journeys. The most attractive feature in the Tesla Semi's interior is the dual 15-inch screens on both sides of the dashboard. These screens are similar to those used in the Tesla Model 3, and the minimalist design of the dashboard aligns with the Model 3 Y thing. Tesla's decision to offer a center seat for the Semi is focused on the safety of the truck driver and other road users. When the driver sits in the center, they're more likely to stay within their lanes, improving safety compared to sitting in the center for two-way roads. This will not affect other vehicles on the road. Additionally, the passenger seat will be replaced with a small foldable bed. The issue of sleeping arrangements will be addressed immediately, and this doesn't take up much space in the cabin. Drivers can fold it when not using it. When transporting goods across the country, the truck cabin serves as the driver's home away from home and needs to provide as many amenities as possible. Modern sleep cabins from manufacturers like Freightliner, Peterbilt, and Kenworth are equipped with conveniences like refrigerators, microwaves, TVs, and storage cabinets to ensure that the driver feels as comfortable as possible. Now, the idea of a fully equipped Tesla Semi suggests a versatile truck, and the next step is to await information from Tesla. At least, we can be sure that in the new version, we'll have an additional sleeping area and storage compartment at the rear.
On the other hand, when this design is applied to drilling rigs, it implies that its weight will significantly increase from the current 26,000 pounds. As weight increases, the cargo carrying capacity will decrease. For example, if the weight of the Tesla Semi is modified to 32,000 pounds, the towing or payload capacity for both the tractor and cargo will be 48,000 pounds with a total weight of 80,000 pounds, an efficient rating for an electric truck like the Semi. Although electric trucks are given a priority of an additional 2,000 pounds for the total weight, overloading the battery pack can lead to degradation quickly. Therefore, even PepsiCo rarely has to bear the max load of 82,000 pounds when using the fleet for 12 hours daily. The driving experience for any truck driver outside the Tesla Semi is likely to be appreciated as there is no longer a 10 to 18 speed gearbox that you constantly shift at single speed. There is no gearbox that we associate with diesel engines as these colossal machines typically operate around 2,500 revs per minute, requiring many gears to move, lift, and carry those 80,000 pounds of cargo. For comparison, the Tesla pickup truck will have a setup of three similar engines to the Tesla Model S Plaid. They'll have carbon wrap motors like the Plaid, and two of these drivetrains are actually intended for acceleration or when you truly need additional power, and they can disconnect mechanically when you accelerate. This means that the pickup truck can maintain a speed of 60 miles an hour on this highway with just one electric motor. In many ways, they've applied everything they've learned over the last decade to manufacture automobiles and put it into the semi to make it operate as efficiently as possible. The end result is that the Tesla Semi will be a powerful machine operating most effectively on the road. It'll have instantaneous torque, no need for shifting, and plenty of power to climb those hills. Most importantly, it'll have regenerative braking when going downhill, which is one of the most daunting aspects for truck drivers. Have you ever seen those runaway trucks going downhill? That's why we often have engine brakes and have limitations on how much they can do that. The friction brake on trucks will heat up and fail almost immediately, but the Tesla pickup truck doesn't face any issues in this regard. It doesn't even need an engine brake. It can recharge the battery and regain some lost energy when climbing uphill and going downhill. Finally, Tesla's lead designer, Dan Priestley, confirmed that they'll soon create an electric version that allows delivery drivers to spend multiple days on the road, overcoming challenges related to megachargers. People often ask why Tesla didn't create these megachargers before the truck since they wouldn't have to wait for charging. Answering this question is quite challenging because apart from those inside Tesla, everything we see from outside is just speculation. Besides, information about the installation cost of megachargers potentially going up to $6 million, more is known about the infrastructure challenges related to the surge in order for Tesla electric trucks. On average, Tesla could generate nearly $30 billion per year by allowing electric vehicle manufacturers worldwide to use the supercharger network. Therefore, the $6 million for megachargers could easily be resolved. However, building megachargers requires local government approval and collaboration with utility companies. This process can take a lot of time and effort prioritizing installation systems. PepsiCo has also invested nearly two years in developing megacharger infrastructure at their Sacramento plant, with about four stalls. They have also committed to meeting greenhouse gas reduction goals and reducing dependence on the power grid. This is to ensure they can meet the growing demand for electricity and battery charging, while creating favorable conditions for the use of electric vehicles and renewable energy in the future. The presence of megachargers at the Lathrop Mega Factory shows that Tesla still intends to use this semi as part of its operational truck fleet. Until now, megachargers have mostly been found at supercharger stations and customer-oriented facilities like Pepsi's Frito-Lay Modesto location in California. PepsiCo has received several Tesla semis, and the company has been using these vehicles as part of its fleet since December 2022. In addition, Tesla executives have noted that the company has designed a 1 megawatt charger for the semi, although reports from January 2023 indicate that the megachargers at Pepsi's Modesto location have the ability to deliver 750 kilowatts. According to Motor Trend, the megacharger 750 kilowatt at the PepsiCo Modesto site has been capable of charging the Tesla Semi from almost empty to 70%, equivalent to about 400 miles within approximately half an hour. According to reports, fully charging the Tesla Semi to 100% takes 90 minutes at the Mega Charger. There are two things that weren't mentioned in the live stream that I wondered about the first self-driving car back in 2017. Tesla emphasized convoy driving and full self-driving, claiming that drivers would be much less fatigued. However, they completely removed any mention of self-driving from the latest updates. I think that reason is that they want truck drivers to be excited, and they don't want to sell a future where they replace all drivers with fully self-driving semis, so I think that makes sense. 
However, Tesla still has all the cameras the self-driving car needs, including new ones at the front of the rig to make driving more enjoyable and faster. Truck drivers can monitor blind spots of the truck. 2024 promises to be a breakthrough year for self-driving features, as it'll be applied to all Tesla vehicles, including rigs and the Cybertruck. The second overlooked feature is the bulletproof windshield, returning to the idea of uptime. Two common situations that render a pickup truck inoperable are flat tires needing frequent replacement for optimal performance in harsh environments with impacts on rocks and stones, all maintenance tasks related to tires, and others. The second is the windshield. They are massive windshields, standing upright and easily crack and other things. If you have a cracked windshield, you can't drive a pickup truck. And it takes a few days to get a replacement. You lose time and money. So the concept of a bulletproof windshield that Tesla first introduced will also have significant implications in the industry. And we hope that the Tesla Semi comes with both these improvements. So we have to ask, what are your expectations for the transportation industry boom? How do you think Tesla is going to assert its dominance? Please leave your thoughts below. We highly value your opinions. We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching our video. And if you did, we humbly ask that you hit that like button and join our Tesla Car World family when you subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Just hit that bell icon. We certainly do value your feedback and your time. And with that, we thank you so much for watching and hope to see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.